I'm Dr. Ellis from the University of Alabama, and I'm the author of the Make Sense Strategies Toolkit. And in this series of videos, we're going to take a look at the uh, grades four or five common core standards for language arts and various applications for using Make Sense Strategies when teaching those standards. So first, we're going to take a look at how to use smart sheets when you're teaching reading. Then we'll take a look at how to use very specific ones designed for vocabulary. Then we'll move on to writing, and finally we'll take a look at some very specific smart sheets uh, specifically designed for supporting project-based learning. So first let's just take a look at the reading and how those uh, standards are set up. So in the Common Core Language Art Standards really reflect three major reading categories, uh, key ideas and details, craft and structure, and integration of knowledge and ideas. Now each of these categories is set up with a series of standards or categories of standards that fall under them. So for example, there are a range of, uh, of standards that address ask and answer questions, some that address summarizing main ideas and details, and making relationship connections. Under craft and structure, they're primarily associated with determining word meanings or vocabulary. And on the integration of knowledge and ideas, there's form and check predictions and inferences, provide reasons and supporting points, and making comparisons. So for an example, in information text, uh, some of the standards related to that, under the category of summarizing main ideas and details, uh, here is sample specific standards. Now you'll notice that the standard for grade four determine the main idea of a text and explain how it's supported by key details, summarize the text. Um, is a basically a form of summarizing main ideas. And then if you look at standard five, it's basically the same standard but slightly more sophisticated. So it's the same standard, but now the, the learner is expected to also refer explicitly to the text as a basis for the answers. And if we were to pursue all of this, the standards that relate to summarizing all the way through the grade levels, they get increasingly more sophisticated. So it's sort of a scope and sequence of summarizing skills as you move through the grade levels. So there's specific standards for information text for summarizing, and then there's specific standards for literature and summarizing literature. Sometimes they're very similar and sometimes they're quite different. So for example, in grade four, determine a theme of a story, drama, or poem from the details and then summarize the text. Um, and then in grade five, it's the same, but you also include how characters in a story or drama responded to the challenges or how the speaker in the poem reflects a topic and then summarize the text. Making relationship connections, their information text standards, likewise their literature standards. And basically the same pattern holds true as you move through these various categories of standards. So in this presentation, uh, we're going to be focusing on ways to use the Make Sense Strategies in the context of teaching those different strands of, st of standards. And so primarily in this video, we're going to be looking at samples of how teachers have used the smart sheets to address various standards. And then later we'll examine um, how to apply various scaffolded instructional routines uh, the teacher can apply when using the smart sheets. So, this is the home page of the uh, Make Sense Strategies, and as you can see, there are a variety of different categories uh, of resources. And so you have organizer smart sheets, such as hierarchic compare and contrast, cause and effect, and then you have a series of specific ones that are designed for teaching specific areas, like the ones under literature specifically all relate to either story grammar or character analysis story problem, etc. There's specific ones for writing, vocabulary, and so forth. So if you're teaching grades four or five literature and you're addressing those literature common core standards, then first place I would look is here because when there are a variety of different smart visuals specifically designed for teaching literature that are just really great for grades four and five. Likewise, up in the organizer smart visuals, or smart sheets. These are more generic uh, types of graphic organizers and there's some in here that are also really good for teaching literature and we'll take a look at some of those as well. Now if you're teaching information text like social studies and science, um, the good place to start 
again are these organizer smart uh, smart sheets um, and there's another section down here called history and science generative ideas and so these are specifically designed for teaching content area like uh, a famous person or a place or a process and so forth so let's take a look at some samples um, under the category of ask and answer questions so again we're back on the home page of the uh, Make Sense software and if you come down here under literature and you click on questions since we're in this category of ask and answer questions I'm gonna click on questions and up, what will open up is a page of various pictures of smart visuals and or smart sheets and um, if we click on one for an example if we click on color this one will open up and this one shows just a very simple um, graphic organizer with the, the basic who, what, when, where, and why, and how type questions prompted on them. And, and here's an example of how it might look after students have completed it. Likewise, if we click on click down here on question connections, then this one comes up. Now this one is a little bit more sophisticated than the last one because here you have the basic prompts, who, what, why, and so forth and then you have a topic here and you have is about so what is this topic about and then underneath is the prompt for what would be a real life connection so we're taking information from literature summarizing it there and then also thinking about how this shows up in real life in some way so here's an example of that so for an example in cross um, five aprils uh, one of the a who question might be drethro and is about a boy who grew up in southern Illinois and his personal struggles in the war between the states. Real life connection might be September the 11th. We don't know the enemy, but it could be someone living next door. We have to watch out for those who want to harm us uh, and so forth. Um, so each of these students or the teacher and the students together come up with different topics and then they work together to summarize what that topic is about and then formulate some kind of real life connection. So that would be text to real life type connections using the questioning strategy. Uh, a few samples for summarizing main ideas and details. This time we're going to take a look at the organizer smart sheets and click on one main idea under hierarchic. And a page like this, well this page will open up and then we're going to select this one main idea frame. And so we'll click on color to open the frame and what will open up looks like this and so here's an example of how a teacher might use this to facilitate character analysis and to, in this case we're summarizing the features of Byron uh, the key character from the Watsons go to, to Birmingham likewise if we click on two main ideas this page will open up and so as you can see each of these various visuals in one way or another really addresses two main ideas and in, in, and supporting points. So if for example we click on the two main idea clouds uh, this one will open up and here's an example of how we might use that when uh, supporting reading information text about the two best presidents. Now I'm going to kind of go through this rather quickly. Um, in, in other words you're probably not going to have time to read all of the prompts or responses that students made on these so you, if you would really like to slow this down and study it, you can always pause the video so you can take a, a closer look at what's on these uh, smart sheets. Likewise, you can study them in the handout. Plus, every one of these samples are on the software itself. In terms of uh, three main ideas, we'd click there. And so a different page, and of course all of these are showing three main ideas and supporting points in one way or another. And so if we click on three main idea clouds this time, uh, here's an example of how that might be used when teaching science. Um, likewise, under summarizing, if you go back down here to literature and you click on character analysis, there are a variety of smart sheets here specifically designed for summarizing the features of characters and so forth. So for example, here's a real simple one. And so we might have be working on Bridge of Terabithia and one of the characters is Leslie Burke. What are key features or characteristics of, of Leslie? And then have students draw a picture. 
In addition, um, for information text, you may want to come down here under history and take a look at some of these because these are specifically designed for teaching uh, a series of high frequency topics. So for an example, if you're teaching about a famous person or reading about a famous person, um, I'm going to click on that and what comes up are a series of smart sheets. Each of these are all related to what's critical to understand about a famous person. So for an example, on this clear table, we'll open that one up and let's just look at these prompts. You have, you have a person is important because ways to describe the person, what was the person known for and not known for or don't confuse with, what was that person's impact then and now, a contemporary individual this person is like or not like because, and then down at the bottom, knowledge connections, this person makes you think of because. So you can see how these all contain various prompts specifically designed to cue kids to think about this famous person in very specific and important ways or focus on the essential understandings. And so here's an example of how that might be applied when reading about and discussing Rosa Parks. Likewise, here's one we'll just take a look at a cause-effect uh, relationship, but these prompts specifically relate to those associated with a famous person. So this person caused the, this person caused this to happen, specific information about it, how and why did it happen, specific information about what happened, and what was the positive or negative impact on the world. So here's an example of how it might be applied to Frederick Douglass. And so this, his experiences as a slave, caused this to happen. He revealed basic truths about, quote, truths about black, pe black people that were actually revealed as myths. And specific information here about Frederick, Doug Frederick Douglass, uh, what, what we're doing over here is revealing as we read the text the various myths that he took on and challenged and what the truths really were behind those myths. And then this section deals with how or why he did it. And finally, at the bottom, what was that person's positive or negative impact on the world? So one of the ways we might use this, say, in fifth grade, is we might, the whole class might be reading the same passage, but I might divide the class into groups. And one group is focusing on just this kind of information, whereas another group might be focusing on looking for what were the myths and the basic truths that the text addressed and finding those, whereas a third group might be looking for the information about how did he do it and why. And so these different groups are working independently, uh, all reading the same passage, but looking for different kinds of information. And then we bring them together in the tradition of Jigsaw and have each group share what they found and then the teacher will elaborate and pull out additional information that the groups might have missed and so forth and then model the note taking um, on the graphic. And then the whole class can together kind of discuss what was the positive or negative impact and co-construct a statement that would reflect that. So that would be an example of how something like this might be used. In terms of teaching about a famous place, um, Influence, action, impact is a pretty cool one for that. Um, so you have a place. It's about a place where factors that influenced key people to be here, notable actions that occurred at that place, what was the impact uh, at this place, on, or what happened at this place on the world, and down at the bottom, so, so what? What's important to understand about this? So here's an example of New York City in terms of the place, and of course what happened was the 9-11 attack. in terms of making comparisons. Uh, if you go up here to the organizer smart visuals, there are just a variety of compare and contrast types smart sheets that you can use. And this is called a, uh, a two by four matrix. In other words, we're comparing two things across four dimensions. So an example of how to use something like this in science is we might be comparing El Nino with El Nina. And um, so you have causes, ocean temperatures, effects on the weather globally, and effects on the U.S. And so when you're using basic comparisons where you have sub subcategories, it's really important that the teacher or you determine what these subcategories should be, because rarely can students do that, because they often don't know enough about the topic to know what the subcategories are. 
um, and then you can make the comparisons. You know, there are a lot of ways of using these. For an example, we can do a, another jigsaw type activity where you might have one group that's reading the passage looking for this information just on causes. You might have another group that's looking for this information. Now, everybody's reading the same passage and so forth. And so after the, the groups have read and discussed their findings and we bring it all together and formulate the overall uh, graphic and complete it. And so this is sort of a combination of using cooperative learning to pull out the information and then guided note taking as we're uh, learning how to, to note it in fairly precise ways on the graphic. Now this is a one, two, three, so it's a three by one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a three by six matrix. And here's an example of it where from literature what we've done is we're comparing these famous female authors and information about them like their expertise, birth date, and accomplishments, and so forth. And this one is like a Venn diagram in the sense that we're doing how they're different and how they're similar um, across these different dimensions. Personally, I like these matrix versions of the Venn diagram a lot better than the two overlapping circles. And it's also more conducive to typing in these. Remember, these are interactive. And so you can click on each box and input the various information and save them to disk. Here's an example of how this one looks uh, in a science lesson where you're comparing a solar with a lunar eclipse. And so you have these subtopics like how often they occur and last, how they look, what causes them. And in this case, we imported pictures um, to sort of illustrate that. So remember, you can import pictures into these as well. Now this one, we tweaked it a little bit further. And so this is a simple two by three matrix, but with conclusions added to it. So we're building in a little bit more higher order thinking when we're using this one. So an example of this is comparing the tsunami of 04 with the World War II Holocaust. And so you have causes, public opinion, and impact. And so do the research on this, so what could you conclude? And what would you conclude about this topic? And so forth. So these are really cool, um, particularly when you get into project-based learning and having students do research and reports and so forth. This is the same one, only using it for social studies. And of course, in this case, we're comparing it across six dimensions. Uh, but we're comparing the House with the Senate, and students are drawing conclusions about each of these. And so one of the ways of using this is we can read the passage together and do some guided note taking as we work through the, the, you know, the text passage that are addressing this, then divide the class into pairs or teams and have each team decide what they would do as a conclusion for each of these subtopics. And then later we'd, they'd share them. So there are a variety of ways of using these for reading, and obviously we've just sort of scratched the surface, but I did want to just kind of give you a taste or a sense of various smart sheets that are on the software and how you might use them for reading. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to take a look at some very specific ones for teaching vocabulary.